Hey Toby. Hey Toby, you such a good boy. You look so content. Look, the ground's wet. Finally got some rain. Last week's video I kept talking about how we hadn't been getting rain and how much we needed it. Video that just came out, like maybe two hours ago. It's supposed to be 97 and hot today. There wasn't really any rain forecasted, just maybe they said like some spot showers. And um, well, yeah. We got some rain, a few inches. Went from like 93 to 64 degrees in about 10 minutes. Anything look different over here? You see that? Oh, that's supposed to be on that table. I swear, I'm cursed when it comes to umbrellas. Palm tree down. That's okay, that one's in a plastic pot. Oh, anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Could be worse, the house is still standing. Had a pine tree split in half, so that's, that's done, that's gone. It was mostly just trumpet vine. Had a huge trumpet vine on it. It was absolutely beautiful, but that's gone. Lots of trash to clean up. Rose of Sharon tree. It could, it needed a prune anyways, but I feel like this is a little extreme. That thing was pretty big, but it was also my privacy. It was my privacy tree. It's fine. You know, I can go through and just prune off this stuff right here. It'll even it out, it'll keep growing. Maybe, actually probably not. This maple tree's gotten so big that I don't, it doesn't get the sun that it got when I planted it there. So maybe it's just gotta go and get replaced with something that can handle more shade. Opportunity to replant things. Yay. There's a limb down in the maple tree. I don't, the limbs in the maple, one, I cannot believe that this tree is still standing, but two, it's one of the woods that's safe to use with the birds, as long as you haven't put any pesticides or anything on it. So with the maple and get that branch down and take a shaving tool, which I don't have, but a wood shaving tool and get that bark cleaned off and put it in a pot and make a fun little perch for the birds. I've wanted to do that for a while. Now read up on whether or not the rows of Sharon wood safe to use with the birds. With the parrots, you know, they chew on things. So you gotta make sure that it's safe wood. And this is the Hibiscus Syracuse. I think it's safe. I'm not sure though, I need to look it up. There used to be another branch right here. Now it's over here. Yeah, this, it needed to go anyways, it's fine. Oh no, not the hydrangea tree. I hope it stands back up. This was so pretty. This is, I was so excited to see how this was going to look this year. I'll leave it alone. I just hope it bounces back. But most of the tree looks like it's intact. Its leaves are all crimped up. You know, they do that when it gets dark and when it gets really windy, they fold their leaves up to protect themselves. It's very smart trees. The only thing I will say is that I think that this was actually going to give me a lot of flowers this year. It hasn't bloomed well, like basically ever. I don't think it was big enough, but it is covered in buds right now. You might, you can kind of see them, the little things. So hopefully those aren't too damaged. This branch looks a little twisted, but I think once it dries out, it should be okay. This queen palm, ugh. Its fronds are all splayed out. It might stay that way. Palms don't always pull their fronds back up. As long as the crown didn't get too twisted, it should be all right, but it'll be weeks to months till we'll even know if that damage occurred there. The spear will kind of fall out and get flimsy instead of stand up like it should as it opens up. And then as it pushes out, it'll be discolored and, or it'll just stop pushing out altogether, cease growing. And it's almost like it got, like they get choked. Sort of, but I don't, it should be okay. This spot was somewhat sheltered. This spot was sheltered. The queen palm next to it. Oh wait, what queen palm next to it? You don't see one there, why? Because it's down here. Well, thank goodness for Gorilla Glue. Try and put it back together. If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you know that I've, this isn't my first rodeo with broken pottery. Whenever you put palm trees in these big pots, they might blow over. In fact, I used to have totally different pots around this pool and then I upgraded to bigger, heavier ones, filled them like almost 50% of the way with gravel, maybe a third with these bigger pots and haven't had one blow over since. It's like the last, what, three years, maybe? Here we are, it's okay. Is what it is, the palm tree itself looks all right. I think, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but this, I mean, honestly, really, probably the best one out of all of them because it was laying down the adenidias on my front porch look like their fronds are just toast. I might just chuck those palm trees. They look absolutely horrible and I'm sick of trying to deal with them. That queen palm should be totally fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. 
the water in the pool was all the way up to the very edge. I ran the filter and drained that out for a little while. And you know, I was figuring this week was going to be like a lot of fun planting stuff. Maybe go shopping for some vinca. I don't know if I feel like dealing with all of the cleanup in a video. I don't know if I do. I don't know what's going to happen this week. Oh, watch out, Toby. Just straighten that one out. Look at the bananas, though. Fairly shredded. That's one of the great things about the Baju bananas. They have really nice, firm foliage. They don't tatter in the wind quite as easily as a lot of other bananas do. I mean, I've had them get tattered before, but with the kind of wind we just had, I'm pretty shocked that they aren't more torn up than they are. I mean, they're kind of torn up. Don't know if there was like maybe a rain-wrapped tiny tornado in there. The trees were like at a 45 degree angle for a long time. Sirens left and right for about an hour, but then the I turn on the news and they're just like, oh, there's a little bit of rain, maybe some hail, which there was hail because I had to come out here to the iguana cage was blowing over here. It was getting up to the edge of the pool. So I ran out and moved it. And anyways, that like, there was hail. My head's still stinging from it. I couldn't see the hail. It was just little bits. Not a big deal. The pedicets look fine. They're not torn up or anything. So that's good. Pedicets are these great big leaved plants down here. Hail usually does a number on them, but I think that the trees are flushed out enough that there was some protection. And it was just like hail mixed in with the rain. So that's why I wouldn't have come out here, by the way, if it was hailing. I mean, it probably would to save an animal from drowning, but I maybe would have like grabbed a helmet out of the garage. Couldn't see that it was hailing, so it was raining so heavily. Cannot believe the tiki bar is still standing. Things are kind of sheltered right here, so that does make some sense. The umbrella, I'm just cursed. I'm cursed with umbrellas. It's just not meant to be. It bent the metal on the pole. This is a pole that was in the table. And um, it, look at that. It's not shocking. It's a big, heavy umbrella. And when there's wind around an umbrella, there's a lot of force there. But from what I can tell, it just came in and snapped the pieces in here. So that metal snapped one of the, what are these things called? Spokes? That's what they're called on a wheel. Well, whatever these things are called, this piece that's dang one right here, this one, that thing, that's broken. Oh, well. I hope nobody thinks I'm like nonchalant and don't care about my things. It's not the case. It's just what's done is done and there's no reason to sweat it. Just gotta put the pieces back together and keep it moving. Like I said, I had been saying I wanted some rain. Got the rain. Wish it had been forecasted because I wouldn't have spent an hour and a half to two hours watering plants this morning. Even that doesn't really matter though. You know, rain is so much better than actual hose watering, hand watering. That's what I was going for. It's the plants always seem so much more happy and healthy. It comes out of the sky. I've got some work to do. May have to replant all the stuff that was in this queen palm pie. Not the end of the world. Can do that. It'll be okay. Looks like the gloriosum and the anthurium got blown over, but they're still standing. This bird of paradise has seen better days. That's gonna need a pretty heavy prune. Oh, that's not gonna be looking pretty this year. It'll look better next year. Yeah, heavy prune. That can encourage the roots to expand more. So it's good for the plant. Yeah, I'll go with that. Right, Toby? I'll pick back up later, hopefully with a cleaner patio. Maybe with a big bottle of Gorilla Glue so we can get that pot back together tomorrow when things have dried out some. You wanna come inside, Toby? We'll come inside. Yeah, I'm over it. I don't feel like being out here either. Hey, Charlie. Such a cute cat. Came in here to see Pumpkin. Didn't know he was there. Pumpkin, you blend in with the carpet so well. Where are you going, bite? Such a brave little toaster. Yes, you are. I mean, not really. She hid during the storm. She doesn't hide from storms very often anymore, but this one, she was like, um, hell no. I'm getting out of here. I wish she wouldn't do that because when there's tornadoes, it'd be good to be able to grab her, throw in the carrier, and get her down to the basement. I don't, are you coming? I heard your little paws clacking. You want to come outside? What's wrong? What's wrong? You okay, Toby? All right, Toby. Okay, well, got the trees cut up. They just need to be tied up and taken out to the yard waste. Looks like something going off that sprinkler head there. I'm just gonna let that be for right now. It's fine, it's okay. <laughs> I think the sprinklers need to be running anyways. Oh crap, this didn't break, did it? Something's rattling. Oh, it was just a rock. Good, these, these things were really expensive and I don't know if I could replace those. They're okay, not broken. Didn't lose power, which is pretty weird because like it just sprinkles out here in a breaker trips, but 
That was a few inches of rain in like an hour. Nothing, still running, that's good. I'm not gonna bother cleaning up the, or picking up I should say, the palm trees that blew over because they're saying that there might be more storms rolling through, so. Oh, I saw that lightning. That's, it's a ways out there, but still a little alarming. Maybe I shouldn't be out here. Wow, the clouds are moving fast. I love clouds. Not so much when they destroy the garden, but they're still pretty. Oh no, Mr. Freckles, get off of him. You're not allowed over there. Poor Mr. Freckles. Give it time. See if it bounces back. It might need some staking. Oh. Ow. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have the Gorilla Glue out here anyways. This begonia needs to be repotted. Is that just in two pieces? That's just in two pieces. That's that's fantastic. That's easy enough. Yeah, it's in a couple pieces. Begonia, it's fine. Any broken pieces, just stick those back in some moist soil. They'll take root. So this is... There, fixed it. Gotta figure out something to do with the strap. It's always flying around in front of everything. Rude. When there's bad storms, I don't bother picking the palm trees up every time. They fall, it can cause bruising inside the trunk, which can actually end up killing the palm tree. So they can just hang out there. Because if there's going to be more, then I should probably just leave them alone. Where did all this come from? It seemed like it was finally clearing up. It certainly doesn't look like it though, does it? Wow, that is so pretty. Not always as pretty when you see little swirling motions going on inside the clouds. I'd like to say that the forecast is the weather people would be telling us if something bad's coming, but they didn't with this. And the, I started to talk about that earlier. What was weird and more upsetting to me than anything that's damaged out here. Like this is just whatever is what it is. But like if they even predict snow, it's all they talk about until that front passes. And it usually doesn't even snow. I'm hearing from friends, like there are posts on Facebook of people who are in this area here in St. Louis where there's like trees through their roofs and down on their cars and like chunks of their houses are gone and it's just nothing. It's weird, it's really weird. Another reason I'm not gonna sweat all this because it could have been so much worse. So, 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 so much worse. Even the heliconias look like they're gonna be okay. This uh, Washingtonia, its leaves were like really going flat and I was a little bit concerned about it that it might get that frizzled top. Frizzle top is a different term with palms that has nothing to do with this. It's when they're it's like a magnesium deficiency causes things to come out all weird out of the center. But when they get the wind wrap, those leaves, like I talked about with this queen palm over here, they can end up like laying flat and not coming back up. Oh, you're leaning. That's kind of bizarre. The wind didn't really even affect this one. Well, clearly it did, but I mean, look at the bananas. Hardly any tearing on those leaves, and but you? Really? Okay. Oh, I think that's enough for tonight. <laughs> I haven't done anything at all. Just walked around and did a garden tour, basically. That's what this was. You, look, welcome to my garden. Everything's fine. Oh, fine for right now, like I said. Could have been a lot worse. I'm glad the house is intact. That rain was coming down so hard at one point that it was coming in through the cracks around the back door. I've never seen that happen before. I was in the kitchen doing some cooking when this all started and the parrot was sitting on the sink. She was hanging out on the faucet and I was taking pictures of her and videos and I noticed that all the trees in the background were going absolutely berserk and I grabbed her and took her back to the cage because I was like, yeah, yeah this is, this is this seems fishy, doesn't seem safe. Just wanna clarify that. If anybody saw that post on Instagram, I immediately took the bird, put her back in her cage and had the carriers ready to go for everything. This tornado sirens never went off, so I guess there wasn't a tornado, but I, it's, oh, something's weird, doesn't make sense. Talked to enough people around St. Louis today and they're, most of them are like, it's, they're saying that it was sunny there was at least blue poking through the clouds and then it was just a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, but not here, not in my area. When it's that specific, you kind of have to wonder if maybe there was just, just a little baby twister that was maybe wind wrapped in there and nobody picked up on it. Oh, the clouds look so cool right now. Speaking of clouds, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna make some tortillas. It's the weekend. Why not? You, uh, that, you don't, that doesn't make sense to you. Clouds, clouds. 
Views on the Road, great cooking channel. Steph and her sister Cloud, they make lots of good food. They're a good time. Check their channel out. They're a lot of fun. That's what the clouds made me think of that. And because I was already planning on making some tortillas, and they have a couple of great videos on making tortillas. Oh, I want to stay outside and watch the clouds. Uh, wait, no, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, probably smart to go inside. Oh, one last thing. I up to 105 yesterday, and the pansies, they looked better than this before that storm rolled through. But they're still holding up. I think it, like the St. Louis temperatures at 101, broke like a 70 year record, but my thermometer I had set on my table, which is in the shade, the sun was on the table though, but the thermometer was in the shade, it said 105.6 at one point, uh, which isn't surprising. I mean, look at all this pavement. I told y'all, it's an oven back here when the sun's really strong, but <laughs> what I was getting at though is, I cannot believe that the pansies are still standing after that kind of heat. They did, they looked better than this, I swear. <laughs> I was gonna point that out when I started this vlog, when my intention of the vlog was gonna be just like, let's go find some vincas, let's plant some fun, pretty tropical planters. Holy crud, it is so much hotter when it's humid outside. It's not even, what does this say? Yeah, it's only 86 degrees, it's the humidity, and that's not even that humid. Yeah, you know, the other day when it was the 105, specifically here, not in all of St. Louis, just all the pavement and everything that didn't actually feel that bad. The air was pretty dry and I was out here a lot of the day. I was, you know, taking it easy. I did all, you saw the vlog. I did all the hard stuff in the morning when it was still cool out, but I, I really, like, it was a beautiful, pleasant day. It's amazing what difference it makes when the, the air was dry. I think the humidity was only 43%. Anyways, I've been out here doing some stuff, a lot of stuff, got all the stuff bundled up, switched out the umbrellas. So the old, my tumor umbrellas back over here at the table. I'm not mad at it, it's fine. Luckily I had an extra one to put over here on this table. It's just for aesthetics. Don't really need an umbrella on the table that nobody's using. This whole area feels bizarre. I think that this whole entire Rose of Sharon is going to need to go. I had this for such a long time, so that is a bummer, but you can see down here how that's splitting and it's really weak. I don't think it would be worth the effort of trying to like you can bolt it, but I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> There's another drip head that needs to be changed. Wow, it is like soupy muddy over here. Where did your emitter go? Where'd your spike go? What the heck? Luckily I have no shortage of drip heads. Don't want to use that. This is a nice one. These are like a bubbler type multi-sprayer. So it comes out in like a, comes out in more of a fan. For these other ones I can get in bulk off Amazon. The adjustable ones. These are adjustable too. It's just a different spray pattern. I was going to try and do this while the emitters are running, but I know how that's gonna go. I'll get soaking wet. It's not gonna work out. Where's all that water pressure when I need it? On the other side of the yard. Actually, I don't, why is the drip even running over here? I can just turn that off. Problem is these timers are a little bit confusing. I think I just switch it to off. Make sure I turn that back on tomorrow. Everything got enough water, more than enough water yesterday, although it is supposed to be, pardon the shadow, Ugh. put that back. It is supposed to be like 95, so maybe, I don't know. I'm sure it's fine, I can turn it back on if it gets too hot for everything. So, got all this stuff cleaned up. That's what I was originally talking about. I got the queen palm down there, set back up. Not in its pot, obviously, because that's broken. And then I have this one that's left. I use this as an opportunity to get back here and do a little bit of tidying. This is where I've been storing all my extra pottery back here because I figured nobody can see it. It's probably the best spot for it. Without the queen palm here, it seems like a good idea to get back there and get some of that done. Did a little bit of rearranging with some of the plants. I should probably move this. You can't even see it with it right there, but I don't know. I kind of like having it over here. I can always reach around and get to that one. I, I need to just set this back up and see what the damage is down there. I had a whole bunch of plants sitting at the base of it yesterday because they were being watered by the sprinkler. So I set them right on the ground, right in front of it, and the sprinkler hits them. And uh, they did okay. I was worried that maybe they would have gotten smashed. My orchid that's been in bloom since December. Finally given up, but I think that was more of a, it's just, it's time and it was pretty hot, right? Can't really complain. Cause like I said, it's been in bloom since December. The cat lay, I got some bruising on it. It already had some sun scorch. I push my cat lay as I always push them too far because they can take a lot of sun, but I'm always like, well, is it gonna be too much? But look, has a butt on it, so I'm excited about that. That's 
just some, some scorched foliage, but at least I'm gonna get some flowers. I'll go ahead and get this set back up, see what the damage is under there. I put this on a tripod and take y'all along with me for the grand reveal of whatever mess is under there, but the tripod's in the bottom of the pool. Need to handle that as well. Get down there and pull some things out of the water. All right, yeah, so everything looks like it fell out of the pot. Not too terribly surprised there, but got it all put back together. It's pretty quick and easy. Not a huge deal at all. Glad about that. It's a few days later. It's been a very busy week. Things that like aren't gardening related, just, you know, everyday life things. That's why there wasn't a video on Wednesday. I just did not have time. I'm so sorry. And my microphone decided to break. I mean, it seems to be working right now, but it's doing something weird. I have to have it plugged in to turn the receiver or the transmitter. I don't know what's going on there, but I got it working. So I'm gonna try and maybe get a couple things done out here. Got a lot of this pot glued back together. It's really simple. I didn't film the process because the mic wasn't turning on. I guess I could just use music and text. I didn't really think about that, but just take a wet sponge, you line all the parts, put the Gorilla Glue on there, stick them together and bungee cord it. It's what I do, hold it nice and tight. If that ends up not being strong enough, then uh, with ceramic pottery, sometimes I'll go through and score it very heavily on the inside and put very thin layers of quickcrete on the inside, let it dry, score the layer that's below it and keep going until that's built up nice and high and tight. Might have to do that with this, I don't know. But made some progress, there's only four pieces left, so getting there. And also, I, I don't know, I'm not too concerned about this, partially because that the Super Tuny Vista bubble gums that are on here, once those come over the edge of that black pot, it really won't even be noticeable that it's not in a pot that matches this one over here. There'll be a height difference, but that's about it. So hopefully I can get this glued up and put back in there. I can't let that right now though. I mean, physically, I could. I'm strong enough, it's just I don't think I should because, you know, the whole rib situation, trying to let that fix itself before I push myself any further, which has been difficult, especially this week. A lot of things need to be picked up and lifted around this week. So many setbacks, but it's all right. It's only been summer for a few days. Still got time to get things done. The weather here looks like it's going to be nice and mild for a bit, so next week I'm probably going to be planting like a mad person out here and just go into town on it. There's so much left to plant. I've gotten a lot of things planted. Oh, I moved Mr. Freckles up here, the Freckles Croton, because the, it just, I decided it would look better up there. This whole area needs to be cleaned up and redone. That was one of the things I was trying to figure out while I was working on planters and doing some things this week, like in the little, like tiny bits of spare time I had to do things was with the garden tour coming up. I was like, all right, I can, uh, use the rest of this video and just go to town, planting things left and left right, and make a gigantic mess. But then the garden tour is gonna be coming out here in a couple days, which, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you see it all in the vlogs, but I always like to clean up, usually, I shouldn't say always, usually I like to do a decent amount of cleaning before the garden tour. So it's like, if I'm gonna make a big mess, it would probably make more sense to do that right after I filmed the garden tour. Why are you so loud? The fourth is coming up, which means there's gonna be jets, and blue angels and things flying over the house all week. That's kind of fun. Not really for making videos, but it's fun to see them fly around. So but yeah, I decided to, I was like, well, just pause things, get that garden tour filmed for Wednesday. And then for next Saturday's vlog, she's gonna be out here planting things all over the place. I did get one thing done over here and I really wanted to film it while I was doing it, but the mic just wasn't working. I couldn't figure out what was going on there. And I just don't have a ton of time to wait and try and fix the mic. So I've got this planter put together here with these heliconias in the back, a couple vinca. I did find some vinca. These are Cora orchid is what these are called. So it's 14 to 18 inches high. We'll see about that. Never know for certain with those things. I made sure to put the tags back here so you can see everything. This firetail acalpha right here, acalphia. The firetail chenille plant from Proven Winners. That's what that is. That'll come trailing over the front. And then these are the vinca. It says vinca, my finger out of the way, that might be helpful. Vinca Cora XDR Orchid. And then the back says six hours a day, water when soil is dry to touch, 14 to 16 inches tall, space them 18 inches apart. It was my only hang up with doing things this way was 
whether or not to put the vinca in here because heliconias, they like a good amount of water. Vinca are fairly drought tolerant, but I figure all the other planters I've put them in in the past, they've gotten plenty of moisture. As long as the soil's draining well, should be all right. I'm not positive. It was really tempting to put a creeping Jenny over the front of this. Do you hear my voice crack? It happens. Because just that pot, doesn't that just lend itself to having a creeping Jenny over the front? So I may actually end up scooting the acalphia and putting it over here with Mr. Freckles because with Freckles being up here on the wall, I actually be able to see something coming over the front and that might look neat against the orange or it may just get lost on there. Something that has either just solid foliage on it or lots and lots of flowers would probably be best for a pot that's that intense and loud. I'll think about it. This also, this was supposed to be down here. I wasn't thinking, it was already up here on the wall and I was like, oh, this is the perfect height for planting things in it. But ultimately I want it right here on the ground, but it's up there. So that's going to have to wait until I have a helper out here. Just like I said, still trying to take it easy working my way back into heavy physical activities so that's just it needs to come down get scooted over i have a different spot where that's going I'm gonna get this repotted and yeah those are all things i'm looking forward to there are still lots of things i want to get planted up but i'm just gonna wait a couple days do some other things out here oh didn't even realize that this had fallen down here it's trailing vinca oops that's down there. It looks like a mandevilla fell down. Another mandevilla. How did I not notice these? I don't understand how I didn't see that. Oh, you know what though? We had two more storms since I filmed last. They were nowhere near as bad as the one that started everything off, but there is still a little bit more destruction and cleaning to do. Got a big weed down here. Need to pull that up. This is all starting to condense itself. So even though, like I say, there's a lot left to plant, it's really Actually, not that much. I just, I have some things I'm gonna do in the front yard and some things that I'm working on for other people. So this is pretty. I'm enjoying this little corner right here. There's not enough sun here for those heliconias. This is just where I had nudged everything so that they would stay safe from that heat when it was 105 and then the storms. I would really like to get this hydrangea tree planted up everything underneath it. I've just been leaving it alone though. I don't want to disturb its roots too much when it's doing all this and waiting. It is starting to, twists itself back up, but it's doing it on the ends. You can see here, instead of all of the branches, the entire tree shifted. So you have to get that up on a stake probably. This is turning into a garden drill. It's not what's supposed to happen here. That's coming up here in a couple days. You know how it is with the plants, just start talking. Sometimes it's hard to stop. I think the majority of the destruction from the storm has been cleaned up. I still see there are a few branches over here that need to be picked up. That hibiscus, there's a hardy hibiscus that looks like it's all splayed out. Hopefully that'll stand back up. It's been a few days. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. If you didn't even know what I'm talking about, there's a plant. Let me go over there. Sorry, things are all over the place. This is just, it gets hard to talk sometimes when I'm, my brain is multitasking with a thousand different things. This right here, it's a hardy hibiscus. It's supposed to be upright and instead it's all wah and laying down. And it does look like something big fell down on a bunch of stuff that I planted a few days ago. I planted, I want to say it was a Sunfinity sunflower right there, and a Tithonia, which is a Mexican sunflower, and really pretty orange flowers. I mean, something's over there. I need to get that cleaned up. And uh, other sunflowers not looking too hot either. So I think something had fallen down right in there too, but it is what it is. They're sturdy. Hopefully it'll bounce back. Oh, look at this sad flaccid leaf that I just tore. Made it even worse. Come on now. I'm happy to have at least gotten this done. I wanted one of these long planters done up with the heliconias in the back. I was torn as far as not to do heliconias or just a whole bunch of these curcumas here because that would look really pretty. I have a big shallow planter that I think those curcumas would look pretty in. These gingers like things pretty moist. Sort of the heliconias, but I was thinking that that would look pretty in a round, more squat dish with just a whole bunch of creeping jenny, that pretty chartreuse green coming and melting over the sides. That would look really neat. This one, like I said, I'm still on the fence on because while I do want to have that texture of the creeping Jenny coming over the front, it does go pretty wild and I'd have to control it because I still want to be able to see the pot, the acalpha. That's not likely by the end of the season to have covered all of that up. But I don't know. It's just kind of fun walking around talking about plants. That's really the only option right now. That's all I can do. Oh, I did finally get this planter put together at this Adenity one. Like for the past three weeks, the plants were just sitting in there. As soon as I was done filming last week's video, I went ahead and started sticking things in here. I know it looks bare, but there, well, there were a bunch of colloidium bulbs in here. Something's been digging everywhere in the garden. I say something, I know what it is. It's the chipmunks or ground squirrels. They're not actually chipmunks. They look very similar. Uh, there are little divots 
and the holes dug all over the place, especially where I put all the dahlias, which makes me kind of nervous. I'm gonna give it a week, see if there's any action there, and if not, then I'll replant in the, those spots with something else. Hopefully they didn't dig them all up. I've never had them do that before. Those are animals that have always been out here and that's never been an issue. And pardon the pot, it's an outlet and it was just, it just kept raining. So I just threw something on top there to help keep the water off of it. Probably find something a little bit nicer looking to put there, shouldn't I? That's fine, is what it is. But the, it's the same plants that I had planned out for this plant. There's a Persian shield in the back that I may have to move because I'm not sure it's going to get enough sun there. The pluck, no, what is it called? There's the tag, pseudoranthemum. <laughs> It's called black varnish. Beautiful foliage. Absolutely love that plant. This is a Rulia right here. And I don't remember the variety. I think it's like Raging Cajun, I believe is what it's called. It has fun, long, wispy blooms on it. Gorgeous red flowers. Then there's a Royal Cosmo, luscious Royal Cosmo, Lantana in the front here. Beautiful flowers. And then a Dragon's Wing Begonia that was in a spot that got a lot of sun, so it has some recovering to do. And then in here with the caladiums, I did caladium fiesta, frog in a blender, and I think a Florida beauty. Hopefully they're still there. I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm pretty bummed if the squirrels dug all those up. And the whole area where I planted all the impatience last week, there are little holes everywhere. All the dahlias are tiny little holes all over the place. So hopefully they didn't do too much damage. Maybe they were just enjoying the loose soil and plopping acorns in the ground. They like to do that. They're little gardeners too. And I forgot to mention last week's vlog, the bridal bouquet mix of dahlias I put into this big barrel here. I think it's about 24 or 30 inches across. And those are coming up. You can see, see all the little divots in the soil where the critters have been in here digging around. So hopefully they didn't dig them up. There's action going on in here. I didn't know what to do with that bridal bouquet mix because I couldn't remember or even figure out what was in the mix and I was like well how do I gauge these by height if they don't tell me which varieties there are so I planted them in this so that they could have a nice circular area so I could gauge how I'm going to need to stake them if I'm going to need to stake them because like I said I don't know how big they're going to get we figuring that out here not too long pretty soon hey Toby what you doing I know very abrupt change the microphone died again and I think it's about to start raining which is great. We could use more rain. Turn to flood levels or anything of that sort. You coming out, Toby? Oh, is it like actually, actually starting to rain? I thought it was just misting. That's a, eh, That's probably too much to have the camera out. Oh, all I was going to say was I was circling back to this after having just picked up that trailing vinca and realized that would probably look pretty good here, wouldn't it? Excuse me, Sky. Just like three more minutes. Just give me a few more minutes. And this is looking pretty rough as it is just because it fell off the wall. And I, that might, it could look good over there. I actually prefer this Vinca over the one that I got, but I was only able to find the Cora Orchid. That's, I popped by a couple nurseries. That's the only one anybody had. Beggars can't be choosers, right? But the Cora Cascade Strawberry is what's in here. And I think that's one of my favorites. It's just a richer pink. And that might look fun coming down the front. They have a similar aesthetic to the Creeping Jenny as far as how they trail. They have a tight trailing habit. They lay pretty flat against whatever surface that they're growing against. This would be sort of a have the cake and eat it too kind of thing. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know, do these go together? I could pull those out. Okay, all right. Set that down. Oh, the strap, <laughs> a mess this week. Uh, I have plenty of other things I could do with these Vinca. Put the new Vinca here and maybe some Sun Impatience or something. Might look pretty in there. That could be fun. I mean, ultimately I just wanted the Hello Codius planted. That's gonna look gorgeous when that fills out and all those fun, beautiful orange flowers up top. I cannot wait to get to see what that looks like. That's gonna be fun to be able to look at. And right, don't you think? And that, like I said, I think that'll look a lot better down here. The geranium's supposed to be hanging up, but the hook that that was going to go up onto got taken down when the, that was the sand cherry, if you were wondering, that red tree that came down that was right here. That was a sand cherry and it, took the hook with it when it came down. So I put a new hook up and it being gone, notice that need to do some painting up here. So that's good. Didn't realize that that was an issue before it was all covered up by the tree, sort of more just distracted by the tree because the tree wasn't even up that high, but I suppose having it there was enough to make me not notice that the paint needed to be touched up and blah, blah, blah. We've gone off enough. I do have some fun projects planned for next week. I already have the plants and everything ready to go. They're out of my front porch. You want to take a quick look? a quick look at that okay more things that need to be painted you coming in you coming you probably want to come in don't you drizzling 
Here we go. Here we go. Good boy, Toby. Hey, fish. How you doing, fish? So easily distracted. Oh, I need to do some watering out here. That's weird. I guess the sprinklers didn't go. Don't know what that's about. Well, I have two flats of lantana. There's one of them. The other one's inside. Where's my hose? Lantana that all could use a drink. Oh my goodness. I don't understand how they're so thirsty. I watered them when I brought them back from the nursery yesterday. It really hasn't been that hot either, but that's okay. Got to them, I think, just in time. Obviously, you never want our plants to wilt, but they'll bounce back. They'll be all right. Tough plants. But as I was saying, I got two flats of those. The other one's not over here right now. So there's 20 of them. I want to do some something fun over here and need to dig up this hosta because the deer ate the top. We have to move that to the backyard. Clearly can't have hostas out front anymore. Yeah, we'll worry about that next week. I'm looking forward to it though. It is supposed to rain off and on the next few days. I don't know how much I'll get done out here, but hopefully some stuff. I don't even know what's gonna be like digging over here because there's a huge Japanese maple here for like ever. So there's a lot of roots and things in there, but it's been gone out of the ground for a few years. Whole area needs to be replanted, but I don't think that's gonna happen this year. I'll talk all about that next week. There's like a soil situation. We're supposed to be playing around with different things in there before investing in a new tree to go right there. Oh, I'm sorry, Toby. Did I forget to let you come out? He always enjoys front porch time. Oh, I think that's going to do it. I still have some glowing to do down there that I already showed everybody. And now it's just a matter of putting one more pot together after that once I found another small broken pot and then that bubble wrap planter and do some cleaning and some tidying film a garden tour and then start the vlog and come out and just make a gigantic mess, which I'm really looking forward to. I just, I'd like to spread the messes out. That's all it is. And I feel like it's a weird transition to go from look at all this broken stuff to now it's plant a whole bunch of things. I don't know, just doesn't, the, that doesn't flow how I'd like it to. So I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Hopefully everybody else is starting to get some rain too. I know a lot of places have been really, really dry. I have a feeling July, at least for a couple weeks, probably gonna be pretty wet, which is good. Need it, right? Oh, and the mimosa, it did, see it? It's kind of hard to see. All the little fluffies putting on a big show. Still lots of buds to open on there. I cannot wait to see what that looks like when it's fully flushed out. This is the best it's ever looked, period. Keep accidentally going back into garden tour mode. Now what's happening here? Like I was saying, hope y'all are doing well. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.